Now for something cute, as you take over the reins of a bouncing ostrich in Splash Lake. Poor Ozzy, he's too damn heavy to fly. But it's okay, he's really good at cracking bridges with his strong beak, so the enemies who are all around him don't stand a chance. The problem is, they all want him dead. In the manual, it says, our challenge is to clear all 60 stages. Okay, let's do that. So you'll start off by cracking the bridge on either side of a safe area. In the manual, it's called a pillar. Once you crack the correct combination, the middle portion of the bridge will fall, sending enemies to their ultimate demise. Yeah, take that, bunny! As you progress, the way to successfully crack the bridges becomes harder as more enemies are introduced and the environments slightly change. X blocks can't be cracked, so you have to work around them. Each enemy has their own way of moving about the stage, such as crabs that move slowly vertically but fast horizontally, or snakes that chase you at high speed as soon as they spot you. Let's not forget Stumpy, the smoking log who does absolutely nothing at all. He doesn't have to, he's way too cool. Your character can also bounce in the air, jumping over certain enemies. You need to master this ability as it will become necessary later in the game. After getting hit three times or jumping into the water, you will lose a life and have to start the stage over again. You can also accidentally crack yourself into the briny deep. Oops. Damn it! In level 10 of each stage, you fight a boss of sorts, who usually requires you to defeat him in a specific way. Defeating this 10th level awards you a cute little cutscene called Ostrich Theater. Aww. Poor Ozzy. When you defeat a stage, your progress is automatically saved in the system's memory, so you can come back to it anytime. There is a little trick to this game that comes in really handy when you're in a tough spot. Each stage is timed. When the time runs out, everything cracks apart but the pillars. If you are near a pillar, stand on it and the game will automatically clear the stage for you. If you're not near a pillar, you'll fall into the water and die. However, if you have at least one guy in reserve, you will still clear the stage. So you can use this as a strategy if you have trouble with a certain area. Ta-da! So, we beat all 60 stages. Now what? Well, there's more. Along the way, you can peck at certain pillars to reveal a special hidden item. There is one in every stage, and the item screen tells you what still needs to be collected. Since the game allows you to backtrack to previously ventured stages, you can go back and find the hidden item you missed. This adds a little extra variety to the typical puzzle game. The best part? It doesn't matter if you die after collecting the item, as long as you collect it. So I often collect the item, kill myself, then reset the game and check out the item screen. And there it is. If you collect all 60 hidden items, defeat all 60 stages, go to the item screen and press run, you'll unlock the REV levels. I'm assuming that means revised, but I'm not sure. Yep, 60 more levels are unlocked with 60 more hidden items to find, and a slightly ramped up difficulty. You can still go back to any previous levels you cleared, but can only start at REV stage 1. The enemies are the same, but the so-called bosses become regular players. Luckily, the time-up trick still works. Yeah! So you beat the REV's 60 levels, check the item screen, and bam, you have everything, which now unlocks something called the NG levels. 60 more that are harder than the previous. However, this time you can visit any of the NG levels at any time, and there are no more items to collect. You've officially unlocked everything in the game. Sadly, the cutscenes are all the same, and beating the 60 stages in any difficulty level awards you the same ending. Being a puzzle game, the graphics are overhead and somewhat simple, but the colors are amazingly beautiful and the game's cuteness really shines through, working really well with the overall theme. As usual, the CD quality music is just awesome. It is way more cartoony and cutesy than some people would like, but you know what? It works. It sticks in my head for a week. Damn you, TurboGrafx-CD! 
The controls are just fine and the loading times are non-existent, so you won't even realize you're playing a CD game. Like most puzzle-based games, it starts off rather easy and gets progressively harder as you go along. But what I loved about Splash Lake is that it never became frustratingly difficult. The two-player mode is also a blast as you try not to kill your friend who might be standing on a bridge you are about to crack. The key to any successful puzzle game is the addictiveness factor. If that addiction wears off too soon, you are more than likely not going to want to play through the hundreds of levels they often throw at you. Luckily, Splash Lake has just enough going on and just enough variety that I found myself wanting to keep playing, unlocking the next set of levels. It's colorful, it's fun, and there's a little more to the game than meets the eye. It's one of my favorite puzzle games on the system and I definitely recommend it. Four CDs out of five for fat bouncing ostrich fun.